Bible study time. Welcome back. I am Megan and we are diving back into the Old Testament book of Zechariah. We are doing chapter nine today. I know we've been in this book for quite a while, but it is a lot of prophecy in this book. It is a lot of stuff to dive into and to research and study. And chapter nine is pretty big. It's pretty big stuff. So if you had not subscribed, please do so. Also, if you haven't read chapter nine, go back and do that, read it, highlight what really sticks out to you. And if you're just tuning in, I have the rest of the chapters uploaded here on the channel, but we are talking about chapter nine, judgment on Israel's enemies. So Zechariah has been getting these visions. He's been getting these visitors, the angels of the Lord coming, but this is the first chapter in which we see he does not have like an angel interpreter. It does not mention the angel of the Lord comes to him. This is the Lord pretty much speaking directly to Zechariah. So I thought that was, that was a pretty big distinction there. And there's also some really big prophecies in this chapter. Some of the most important ones because it's talking about the Messiah's first coming and Jesus' second coming. Huge, huge here. So, the first few verses start with a warning to several cities. It goes as far to say, the word of the Lord is against you. That is huge. That is huge. Okay? The word of the Lord is against you. And goes on to list all these different cities. If you read in scripture, it's like... Um, Hadric, Damascus, Gaza, Ekron, and Tyre, Tyre, T-Y-R-E. That was a huge, huge one mentioned here and here. And if you really want to go back and just like discover the significance of these cities, I did just a little bit of digging into this. Um, and these cities are significant because these were conquests that were done by the one and only Alexander the Great. And even though he is not mentioned specifically by name in scripture, a lot of scholars believe this is, you know, he was like an instrument of God. He was used by God to take on these cities and conquer these cities because these cities, if you look at a map, are like aligned to Jerusalem. And he was actually the only conqueror in history to conquer Tyre, Tyre. I wish I knew how to say that, pronounce, pronounce it correctly. T-Y-R-E, so it's pretty big. That was a city that was like built up like this fortress. And anyway, he was the conqueror there. So I thought that was pretty cool. And we get to see how these big like historical figures like Alexander the Great could be used by God. And like it's, it's, it's all in his plan. And we know that God likes to use these nations to come against Jerusalem, either for, for judgment and things like that. So in verses one through eight, God is promising to judge all the nations surrounding, surrounding Judah. He's going to stop the oppression and he is going to raise up those who are left to become the clan in Judah, like the remnant of Judah. If you study the locations of these cities, you can learn some cool details about each, but the main thing is they are falling under God's judgment. So no matter their power, no matter their status, their ruler, or how high their fortress was, no, no matter how great their wealth was, God is the conqueror here. All nations, including Israel, will stand before the Lord. Judgment is coming. Then in verse 8, the scripture says that no oppressor will overrun his people again, and he is keeping watch. This leads us to the coming of Zion's king. It starts in verse 9. This is where it shifts. Okay, this is where it shifts. And it's a call for Zion to rejoice and shout. And remember, we studied Zion. It's the city on, on a hill, the city of God. In this part of the chapter, starting in verse 9, scholars say that it actually was written 360 years later from the first part of this chapter. Wow. Wow. So this is the start of the, of the coming Messiah, okay? And it actually goes into about, see your king comes to you. And this is actually in reference to the Palm Sunday prophecy of Jesus riding on a donkey, okay? 
And the scripture even points out that this king that is coming is righteous. He is righteous and victorious. And we know that all the kings of the Old Testament, we had some good kings, but we had some not so good kings. And this is the king that is righteous and he is the king that's gonna be victorious. But he's lowly or, or, in other words, he's humble. He's a humble king and he's riding on a donkey, a donkey. Your king isn't riding in on this magnificent stallion, this war, ho war horse like Alexander the Great always did. He had like this great stallion that he rode in on to, to conquer his cities. He was coming on a donkey, okay? This king will come humbly riding on a colt and he will pro proclaim peace and rule from sea to sea. We can read Matthew 21, 5, when just Jesus entered on Palm Sunday. We, we know that. Hosanna, Hosanna, that type of thing. That, this, is, this is so cool. So cool. I also picture Mary, who I just think, you know, when she had to travel to that end to give birth to Jesus, I think it's safe to say that she traveled on a donkey. So Jesus actually was in her belly traveling on the donkey. So I thought that was pretty cool too. So now verse 10 speaks of the battle, the battle bow being broken. And some believe this is prophecy speaking of Jesus' second coming when he will reign over earth for the, for the thousand years. And now 11 through 17 is Judah's liberation and their blessing. God refers to his covenant here. And again, it's the call to return to me and I will return to you. That's been like a theme throughout Zechariah. Return to me and I will return to you. He's going to return to the promises of return to their promises of God. Hope in him. Not these powerful nations, hope in him. The Lord leads the battle. He sounds the trumpet. God will save his people and his battle. And it's his battle. And the people will sparkle in his hand like jewels in a crown. That was a beautiful scripture. That was, let's see, what verse was that? The rest of verse 16. So there will be a restored Judah. Fortunes restored here in Judah. This is the promise. No more hardship, no more poor people among them. Prosperity is going to be restored. And the big thing here is God always, always fulfills his covenant promises. We can put our hope in him. So this was a really, really big chapter. It took me quite a while to really sit in it and, and just read it over and over again and listen to commentary and research. And, and I know not everyone has that time to do that. That's why I do this channel for busy moms, for, for women who don't get a lot of time to spend in the Word. I hope that these videos help you to spend 10 minutes a day listening. And, you know, I have motherhood surrounding me. You hear noises in the background. I'm sorry. I usually do this at nap time. But now we're going to start studying chapter 10, which is titled, The Lord Will Care for Judah. So it's going to be some more big prophecies probably to uh, digest. But again, if you haven't subscribed, please do share this, save it, comment if you have questions. But please open that Bible and start studying along with me. If you need to go back and some other Old Testament books, there's plenty here on the channel. Also, I'm very active on TikTok, encouraging you daily. So thanks again.